So thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, so for our audience, Deborah has prepared a basic presentation for us, and we're going to talk about how uh, to look at UI UX uh, and how to master UI UX. So these are the pro tips. So Deborah, all over to you. Yeah, sure. So um, the first thing that I can tell is like um, I can describe a project that I worked on that was like heavily focused on visual identity and like my role in it. And I can show here um, this is like the most heavy um, design that I had to do for a page and I'm still working on mm -hmm. it actually or so bound. Um, the first model that I created was this one that it is like um, a, a social file platform, but um, they wanted it to be like a hub for games. And But now the website is evolving to a social media. And then I have to change all this design to something new. So um, I started creating this platform that is online now um mm -hmm. where you, users can interact transform their NF nfts into stickers um to slap on posts it's still in progress and i've been signing the identity to a new version that will soon be released um but it's like that's the best example i have of you know really having your best uh design creativity into UI UX design. Um, I can tell you a, a little bit about also uh, my biggest challenges when I'm creating or maintaining a visual identity in UI sure. UX projects. And the biggest challenge is to keep everything on brand, but mm -hmm. with sparks of creativity. Um, it is highly really highly important to stay creative even though the company itself isn't seeking creativity because that will help you stand out from the competitors and gain more leads um, we make like we may we must make our work shine in its own way which means giving as much importance to the visuals as to the user experience so many professionals think that the user experience it's more important than the visuals. And I would say that it's half and half. So you have to pay attention to the user experience, but also to the visuals, because that's what's gonna stand out from the other ones around there. So the main challenge is to keep consistent throughout the process and establish a steady design on all different interfaces. So. That's why I put here, unleash your creativity, because it's not because you have all this technical part related to UI UX that you can forget that you are a designer and you must create. You must create new things, innovate, and, you know, go crazy sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah. I, so, that's that's so if we can go back to the original slide, uh, the first one that you showed, that was one of your a best and complex project that you've done. So can you please uh, maybe take me to the process where you started uh, mm -hmm. and what were some of the steps that you followed? What were some of the foundational skills that you use, frameworks that you use uh, to bring this concept to life? Yeah, sure. Um, so this website, when I, when I arrived at the company, um, they asked me to create like a new version of their website. Um, because it was a little bit messy, confusing. And then I jumped on, like, I jumped in, in the most crazy um, assets of design ever. Then I had to kind of create a new brand for them, new brand design. So they wanted, they really want, the client was aiming to something like Japanese mixed with um, technological, so the first thing that I did was to create a mood board and put in there everything related to tech, Japanese styles and stuff like that. And I just drop it in there and colors, color palette and everything, fonts. So mm -hmm. after I presented to them and they approved my ideas of um, this new style, 
then I started creating the wireframe and then I, you know, I started slowly, like, let's create first this wireframe. Let's see if it works. If it's not, then let's change a few bits here and there. So basically that I didn't have time by, back then to create a design system for it because they were in a hurry and design system takes a lot of time, like long, long days for that. Yeah. So that reason I created just this landing page that I'm showing here that, mm -hmm. you know, just shows a little bit of um, the project and the page and a little bit of prototyping mm -hmm. in there, just so mm -hmm. we can get the feeling of how the website will be. So this part is very important, you know, to create prototypes to show how the brand can stand out in there and also mm -hmm. how the experience of at least the main page will be so that's why uh, i created only this page actually and then after mm -hmm. that the company changed its um goals and mm -hmm. then i had to create a new new other designs and then it's like being transformed so i'm still working on them i'm still renovating revamping everything and mm -hmm. now for now this is the current current page like mm -hmm. uh for you to snap like um you have to slap stickers and then you can do like uh social quests and stuff like that it became not only a hub for games but also for people to gather their nfts and transform them into stickers and slap in there so um that was like my process and it's still being so as we created this landing page now now i could finally focus on a design system and i have with uh, with me and my team um a person who is taking care of the user research and everything else because i was focused more into the ui and a little bit of ux design not really ux research so okay. that's why i i focused on this and yeah that that's it pretty much <laughs> okay that's awesome that's a, so just one uh, major takeaway so i on the left i'm looking at at a darker theme very gaming oriented so the people would like to see all of that on the right you've shifted to a uh, to like a white theme with like the pinkish and the like colors yeah so that's like a complete shift complete so, uh, yes complete shift, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah was I... that intended or was there something which came out of blue you presented the idea they loved it what was a uh, why this the, shift and why this why this yeah. all the, this yeah. difference it's because you know, um, at first, uh, I made uh, a research before I created this one on the left. Um, I made this like I did this research about um, the other platforms, especially that are more or less like this one have like the same idea. And most of the blockchain pages, they follow the same structure. If you take a look at them they are always like dark and they yeah. have like yeah they are all the same they are dark they are um using like these neutral colors it's everything very solid and, and a little bit mm -hmm. you know um rigid sometimes so i uh, by doing this research i proposed to the team to create something entirely different something colorful something that shows a little bit of more life um, and have like different effects and stuff like that. So uh, that's why I came up with this first layout because I didn't want to step away too far um, from the original page that they had that it was dark. So that's why. And after that, okay. they changed the whole idea of the website. And if, like they wanted to transform that into a social um social product so i had the freedom to actually change it and mm -hmm. you know start something new so that's why uh we built this page that is light and in the future we want to put like a dark mode as well because some people 
prefer that. So it's um, some accessibility stuff that I've been researching as well. So everything is going to be in there. But I displayed here these examples just so we could like understand, like see how uh, uh, the goal of the company changes so much the ux and also the ui so and also we can rely on um the design like the the visuals not only the experience so that's that's it <laughs> yeah okay okay that's awesome yeah go ahead yeah sure um okay so then i talked about um you really um not only focusing on UX experience, but you know, also to take your moment to really create something that can, you know, catch everybody's eyes. Um, so what I can talk about here, it's like the best practices that I follow for maintaining a solid visual identity in all the designs certainly is create a solid design system that will ensure all the components and pages to follow like the same guidelines and you have everything there. So for example, over here, uh, I'm showing just a little bit of, just a tiny bit of um, the design system. Um, and as you can see, I have like, we have in all the sun system, we separate everything, everything is separated, even like a dot that you create, you put that in the design system and then you, you know, um, create like the specs that I'm, sh that I'm showing now and by the specs, they're not really all for the designers, but to the developers because they have to know um the sizes and you know just to follow like these rules and the website will be just like you designed so the developers can you know follow your lead on that uh so the design system has to be complete and has to be you know with everything like library of icons and everything so that's the best way for you to keep a solid visual identity throughout all the pages that you create, including for mobile and tablets and etc. Um, okay. Yeah. So moving on. Well, um, for example, uh, I can say that which design systems or frameworks are like most useful for maintaining a, a visual identity. And the first thing to do is to understand the brand you are dealing with. The brand is the most essential item, so the designer must be aware of how to use it well. Even though the design system it's being built uh, follow specific rules, you must be pers you must work on personalizing it for each company. So you might say, um, like baking a cake, you might know the recipe but if you want to create something unique you must put your own sparks into it so that's that's something really important for all the ui ux designers over there it's just to you know we have all of the ui ux designers have this kind of recipe of how to build like this formula how to build a website a, a, an app a game whatever but um so the good designer, like uh, the most experienced designer, will always put some sparks, some, you know, cherries on top of the cake just to make it really shine in, in this world filled of um, apps and, and pages and whatnot. So um, that's that's why I put this drawing here. <laughs> um, okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So my um what i was gonna say yeah um like what are my go-to resources for inspiration and trends in visual identity so there are two websites that i follow the most but of course that there are pinterest and even behance 
Also, uh, like the best way to do any research for inspiration is to download and use as many apps as possible. So navigate to as many websites too. Um, check how the apps behave in desktop versions and so on. So that's like the most important thing is the user to be like the, the designer to be a user. So the designer can actually create stuff um, and, and actually get inspired and also get references of how it's built and all that. So it's, uh, it's about learning. No, mm -hmm. uh, this on the left here, it's a, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, shit. Wait, wait, something happened. Okay. It's here. Um, this over here on the left is dribble, of course. So dribble, it's really, really good for the designer to look at inspirations of illustrations. Um, also UI, um, a little bit of UX, but not that much, but especially for the art, artistic part of the website or app or whatever you are building. So Dribbble is the best one, but on the right one, you can see the awards website that is like perfect for any UI UX designer to check it out from time to time to get inspired, to get like new ideas, because the best websites in the market are there. Like this is the, the best reference that I can give. <laughs> okay, okay, so yeah. Uh, what's your take on, um, you're just asking, what's your take on this new GBT stuff that's coming up? So now you have those prompts and with the prompts, you can get those images made and done and you can maybe a, like a few days back, you can, maybe add tweaks to it. So do you use it, not use it? What's your take on it? To what do you mean exactly? Like um, what For the apps? inspiration part, uh, like GBT, uh, chat GBT. So chat GBT has Dali, where you can generate images with, you could just tell them, okay, I'm looking for this kind of an environment. We should have this kind of a texture and this kind of feel. and voila there's an image like with a few clicks so are you using it do you recommend using it oh yeah for sure i mean everything that you can get inspired to it's it's a good thing because um, even if you like to take a walk and mm -hmm. see new buildings new people new stuff it gets you inspired then go it's the worst thing for a designer it, it doesn't matter if it's a ui ux designer or whatever a jewel jewelry designer um, to stay in front of blank walls working like a robot every day that what kills the creativity and the work so one must really step out of your house and you know watch as many series and take a look at as many websites possible but also live life like see the nature I don't know <laughs> things like yeah, that yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, so moving on. All right, so um, in today's fast-paced digital landscape, um, how can I, for example, prioritize user needs and expectations while ensuring timely projects delivery? So this question is... Um, Something that I thought about and, you know, it involves a strategic strategic approach that uses agile uh, methodologies and effective pro project management. For example, um, prioritizing tasks, create, uh, creating user uh, stories that are focused on their value to the user, formulating hypotheses and rapidly prototyping and testing and iterating based on real user feedback. All of that and more will definitely ensure the project runs within this expected timeline in a productive way. So it's just not an effort that it's only um, about the designer creating the, the systems and the art and everything, but also like your whole team um, beside you 
like the product manager and you know the user researcher if you have one in your team the product designer so it's a team it's a it's a really a team effort to make um, everything in its right time and concluding everything in the most quality possible um, so that's basically it um, Okay. Over here, uh, for example, when when a, a designer is faced with conflicting usability requirements, for example, um, the designer must uh, prioritize design decisions to optimize both user experience and business objectives. So, the thing is, the client input is very welcoming when we start ideating on features for the platform after all the client is the one who understands their brand and goals the most right but it is with the expertise of a product designer ux researcher and ui ux designer that the client's platform will come to life consistently um, separating bad ideas from good ideas so it's so a matter of it's all a matter of you know trusting the professional skills to deliver a good user experience balanced with the business expectations so because i know that there are many business many companies that really have like lots of ideas and you know have a little bit of experience using apps and websites but they must um they must trust the professionals that will build that so if they want me to put a color that is really not a, a color for accessibility for example for color blind so we have to pay attention to all that and we must, you know, go ahead and talk to the client and explain everything. So, uh, talking about usability, um, accessibility requirements. Um, so, for when, I, when we are designing for accessibility, the steps that um, we take to ensure that the interfaces are inclusive and you know compliant with with accessibility standards like double CAG for example it's really crucial for the designer to know that because so, so for the users can you please define what WCAG is uh, so as to sure. make it yeah. sure so these uh, guidelines called double CAG they are uh, organized into four principles. They are perceivable, um, operable, understand understandable, and robust. So what it means, like the perceivable, it's like the information and user interface components must be presentable um, to users in ways they can perceive, like they have to understand what's happening there. <laughs> So, the operable part is that the user interface components and navigation must be operable. So, they ha they have to be able to operate so the user can, you know, click here, click there, and things happen. It not like you can't leave it in a way that the user will have difficulty in finding information, clicking on stuff, stuff like that. So robust for example it uh it's like the content must be robust enough that it can interpret can be interpreted by um reliably with um sorry with real reliably <laughs> sorry yeah, really. by a, a wide variety of users agents and and assistive technologies and all that so it must be robust it must be strong to support like accessibility um 
pages. So, and also the last one would be understandable. So the information and the operation of user interface must be understandable. So this is pretty clear. So <laughs> we have to understand pretty well what's about. So that's why simplicity when creating a design is like, it's a uh, crucial. Um, so into early design process, like it's important to incorporate the accessibility right in the start. So you receive a project, you have to think about all of these four things that I told, like, um, and then you conduct user research and create personas to ensure that the user's need and uh, challenges are expected. For example, using as accessible design tools um, like color tools to simulate color blindness and contrast checkers and like if you take a look at Google, you go and you find as many accessibility tools possible. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, okay, okay. So uh, next thing is like, how can we choose the right UI UX framework for a particular project? What is uh, the thought process behind it? So the first thing to do is to understand and define the business goals, whether it's going to be an e-commerce, social media, or a portfolio. Then it's time to determine the target audience and how they can affect the UI UX framework. We start ideating mm -hmm. the core the, the core features, brainstorming new ideas and getting into organized conclusions. So we do mm -hmm. research a lot in this phase. Wireframes and sketches are created, of course, all thinking about accessibility, user experience and business goals. We prototype and test. Um, I am used to working on Figma, for example, and my favorite UI uh, material would be the Google material design. But that depends on the designer, that depends on the, 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 the product that you are creating. So mm -hmm. there's also, for example, Bootstrap for the dev team to rely on, although it's, it is important for designers to have an idea of how coding is done, because I can't create something that it's impossible to do in coding. I know that nothing is impossible in life, but um, let's not make the devs life like hell. <laughs> let's try to make okay. it easy for them. So yeah, so, um, so the process would be to choose like the best frameworks that fit for each designer. Like I know many UI UX designers that use um, Adobe XD, for example. Um, mm -hmm. I used that a lot a long time ago, but now I use only Figma. So it depends um, on how the the designer wants to you know go. Um, mm -hmm. So the thing is, sorry. Oh, here. So the thing is, um, let me think. Um, so by sh sharing a time when I had to make a tough, tough decision that required balancing user needs with business goals, um, how did how can a designer navigate through this dilemma? and what were the outcomes of it, for example, um, and how the designer can deal with that. So, well, it happens all the time. Like, you have to make this tough decision um, that you have to put the company needs in here and then the design needs, user experience needs, all leveling. Um, so businesses are not typically, particularly really design savvy, but so designers should be patient and explain that not all features will be possible to make it to the end. Like, um, especially when it comes to user experience and accessibility, 
I usually rely on my creativity and sketch the best ideas possible that are balanced and can please both sides. Research mm -hmm. and testing are crucial and communication is vital. So it's like essential to be transparent and precise when talking to clients and advocating your ideas, you know? So as I am saying here, designers should be teachers to like teach who like if you if you work to um if you work for a business company that doesn't understand design doesn't understand stuff but have great ideas so the designer mm -hmm. should take a time to explain maybe create a presentation just you know explaining how design works how the pages work actually so basically that um, okay. On. Okay. So, as like design teams become more interdisciplinary, like uh, the collaboration tools or methodologies, um, can you can find them very effective in facilitating communication and alignment across different disciplines, such as design, development, and product management. So I'm not a radical, agile user, but I understand its importance, especially when it comes to sprints and organizing tasks, for example. However, mm -hmm. if you follow it strictly, it can become tiresome a little bit for the team. It depends on the team, of course. Always being micromanaged and having to spare some time to give reports and discuss point numbers for each task it, it can be a lot for many people. I reinforce here, it, some people really love it and it works for these people, but for some people it doesn't work if you are too rigid about it. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you take the good stuff from the Agile methodology, things will still work out greatly and your team can be less stressed so at least that's my experience with several multidisciplinary teams in different companies. So <laughs> um, for conversations, we have Slack, of course. Um, in my opinion, for keeping track of threads of conversations and you also can separate business in tabs, which comes in handy when you're working for several companies at once. So it's what happens to me actually um so you can actually use it very well but also you can use microsoft teams and trello and monday and so many other um platforms like that for sure um but slack can be pretty good <laughs> i know why, that why is notion your top favorite what oh yeah Okay, so right. Notion is a robust product okay. management platform. So you can create almost anything there um, or use preset templates for task lists, uh, file uploads and calendar settings. Of course, there are others in the market like Asana and for example, or Trello that I mentioned and Jira, but Although I think Jira is a bit confusing for the team if it's not managed correctly. So um, <laughs> it comes with the agile, super strict agile methodology in Jira it can be mm, a bit tough. Yeah. But yeah. Notion is like uh, a place where you can create basically everything there in, it, in the way that the company and the project um, feel fits like best for them so in, you can also create websites in there and different pages different stuff so it's amazing there do you use it yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah getting used to it because i mean i think you need to learn a bit more of notion and how it works to get used to it so yeah that's my challenge so that's why i was asking you oh yeah yeah i mean um there are many people that are specialized in notion i'm not one of them 
but I understand like the basics of it and I think that it works pretty well because you have everything there. You have the task management, you have um, the calendar with all the tasks, you have like Kanban and everything that you need to see very well your tasks. Also, you can upload as many files as you want in there and they are pretty easy to download. So. You don't have to have, for example, okay, I have Asana and then I put all my files on Google uh, Drive. So you have two separate platforms to do that. So in Notion, mm -hmm. you can do everything in one place. So that's, I mean, let's try to use the minimal effort always, <laughs> like okay. for, okay. for these kind of tasks, it's important. Mm -hmm. And of course, GitHub, that is like essential for developers to build and test the products and also keep track of tasks and deliveries. So basically okay. that. Makes I, sense. yeah. So another thing is that as technology continu continues to advance, um, we designers, not only designers, but artists in general, but what would be like the role of artist of AI uh, yeah. playing future for us, for designers and artists, and how are like mm -hmm. how can we prepare for this shift? So I believe that AI is coming and scaring most artists, right? <laughs> Some might say, ah, AI will steal our jobs and protest. But mm -hmm. I mean, it might be, but before that happens, um, we must use it to our advantage, right? Like yeah. it's something that it's unstoppable. It's going, we want it or not, it's there and it's happening. Mm -hmm. So instead of just staying there and, oh, I don't want to use it because it's, uh, I, I don't agree. And I mean, you, you can have your position of course, but if you work with it, instead of being scared, like work with it as a backup helper. No matter what, we must be flexible, adapt to this new reality. Is that what I think? And see the bright side in it, like, which means the help it can give us um, if we use it wisely. So it's a matter of using it wisely, you know, just understanding that they can be helpful but they can't really do your work. So if I am uh, an illustrator and I want to create this super huge illustration, um, it's like, it's not good if I go to chat GPT for and generate like images that I should be illustrating. So that's a not very wise decision because it's not going to be you who will be doing that. So it's not going to have your particular style and your touch in there. So if you want to take one or two to sketch ideas like, okay, I need to create um, an image of a tree with uh, some fruits in it, like, okay. So I don't know how to draw a tree. I can look at a, an image on Google or I can just dump it to um, ChatGPT and generate this tree. Um, and then I can just use it as a reference. So that's like how I use sometimes ChatGPT when, when I am faced with um, lots of um, challenges, especially about time. If I can't have time to actually um, think of, uh, you know, um, a diagram or something that I need help and I don't have any help with me, um, ChatGPT can be helpful for sure. So, yeah, I, I don't think they are our enemies unless they, of course, become like <laughs> um, uh, sentient and they can just go crazy and exterminate us all that's um <laughs> something that we can worry about <laughs> so yeah okay okay makes sense so the the second like the 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 next thing would be like um as an art director um in the design community 
uh, what are the key principles that I can emphasize to inspire creativity and innovation among aspiring designers? Like mm -hmm. many designers come to me all the time um, asking for advice and, and stuff like that. And I'm very honored because I really like to teach stuff. So first of all, the first thing to do really is to be patient with yourself and your clients. Like mm -hmm. experience will come with time. We all make lots of mistakes, even after a while. Like I still make mistakes. I bet you do and everybody else because that's normal. But you learn with them. So get used to making mistakes, but learn from them each time you make them. Keep focusing on your goals as a designer and embrace everything related to it. Make it become your life. So, um, and everything you breathe will be designed for you. And if you want to become a UI UX designer, navigate carefully and attentively uh, through several websites. Uh, spend time researching inspirations on Dribbble or awards or any other platform that you find interesting. Um, use the product, be a user to experience every type of app and website you can. And I was gonna say, play video games, you know? Go to your phone and download a game, like this one, for example, that I found. It's a solitary game, but look at how creative it is and dynamic. So things like that matter. Um, so it's not everyone who's fond of games, but they can teach us a lot about user experience and visuals. So the more you use game experience on your platform, the more you'll su succeed. Um, so if you're an aspiring graphic designer or illustrator, live and breathe it. The Massica courses um, and like get used to practice every day check magazines, old designs, new trends, everything. So it's basically consuming design, being a user. Because what happens sometimes is that designers um, don't use phones. They don't use like um, apps. They are not curious about new trends, new stuff. And that can be like dangerous for us who work with technology and stuff. So that's why. Um, so, um, if I can look back at my career journey, mm -hmm. the valuable lessons that I've learned from both successes and, and failures that have shaped our, my approach to design, well, I'd say keep updated. I just said it. <laughs> design changes all the time. Every year we have a different style to approach. Keep updated on new softwares as well and experiment with everything. Always aim to the future. So don't be scared of new technologies like AI, for example. Don't ever put a deadline that you can't fulfill in a project. Always give more room for unexpected events because we always want to deliver stuff as fast as we can. But mm -hmm. we have to know how to measure our time. And, you know, say, okay, I take four days to create this project. All right, so put six days instead. I don't know, because you need more time if something eventual happens. So that's why. Um, so I can say that, um, for example, um, don't ever also underestimate your value, but also don't overestimate it. So you have to keep a balance. One can't be that humble, but not that arrogant. Balance is everything is what I told you. So that's it. Like you have like, to know your value, but also know your your struggles and how you can, you know, um, 
go in a path knowing yourself and you know not being that humble but not that arrogant being the middle so it's okay <laughs> um okay. yeah so um That's when it comes to yeah <laughs> so when it comes to um face like the biggest challenges uh as a ui ux designer uh when it comes to a new tech product for example or like how can i test my product designs and what methodologies i can use like there are many tools to help with testing but the best one is when you send to real users to test it and give their feedback so there's a b testing where you compare two versions of a design to see which performs better um using google optimize or any other um application that you can um then you can send like surveys on google forms or any other app um asking about their experience and suggestions and then you create prototypes that simulates the user experience it's all very good before sending to real users so there are people who really test for companies so it's important to like test with them first because they are used to really using thinking as a user experience way and then after your prototype and check it several times then you used to, you send to real users um and and that's like how the the thing is like um so uh the biggest challenges uh when it comes to for example a tech product for example um uh, for a ui ux designer sometimes is to understand the business market <laughs> as some of the technologies are very different from um our day-to-day -day life uh for example i've had to learn a lot about crypto and web3 market for a project and another one i had to learn how to create ui ux design um for a vr game and the important thing is to keep experimenting and never turning down any challenge because it might be difficult so it's basically that if it comes to you hey create a vr game for me and then you don't know you don't even have a, a, a headset then just do it go for it experiment do everything you can and embrace that because learning is always good so it's all about experimenting and you know testing stuff testing how you can get in there like okay um i didn't like to for example me i really don't like to create business cards for example i really hate it <laughs> i i mean i am a graphic designer by nature because that's my graduation but i really hate doing some of the graphic design works <laughs> then i jumped into um web like um ui ux design for example and ui ux design for games and stuff so i chose my path the the one that i feel that i fit the most so it happens like you have to just set your your path like that so experiment yeah. but i've worked a lot uh doing business cards in my life even hating it but i got the experience and now i can create any business cards like <laughs> it's okay <laughs> so <laughs> it's basically that um so uh the like one of the things that also i i thought about saying it's um what are like the role of design systems in in ui ux design frameworks for example so it it has like a very important role with the design system like here uh the designers can have like a precise and organized set of components and libraries and the developers can also easily find any asset they need so it's like i'm showing there like you just type on assets button 
and then you just grab this button and they have like the button have like all the things that i need um i want to put an icon i don't want to okay i have two icons oh no that's okay so this is like make the designer's life easier and also to provide to the developers um as many things as they need like things that we don't even think about like okay i have to create a checkbox all right so go there on in the design system and create several types of um check boxes like um like different styles of it and see what fits to your platform and make it two or three and then send it to the devs so it's um basically having to think about everything related to the platform so for example the first thing um let me go here um the first thing is to understand like uh how the brand and how are the brand and the client's expectations so because that's like the first thing in a ui ux design process and, and then methods that we can follow for example um that understanding the client's expectations then after researching about it it's important to set what business goals are and the type of product they want so more researchers so wireframing so the so it's like a formula you know that was telling before about the cake it's just you have this formula but you have to keep going and like creating different stuff than the formula the, the original formula so basically it's just you know uh prototyping um and and having a, a very good communication with the devs if it went good then start a more lo-fi version of the product design testings with accessibility um choosing the right fonts color palette and more and then you start creating the design system slowly so um so you create only the the more high five like version of the product uh when it's approved so you start the design system right not at the start of the project but at the um almost not end but in the middle of it you know so that's what many like um beginners in ui ux design um can't always understand at first that um the first thing you do is really start starting with an idea and then you start all this formula of processes until you have the final art of your website and then you start the design system because you have to know like for example how can i know how a button will behave and will be the ui of it if um i don't even know the brand so it's hard you know to create something that much complex in the start of a project so um so sometimes like you can't really build a platform that it's like um beautiful and wonderful but it's um actually hard to use so things like that you have to keep in mind so it's basically that um okay an effect <laughs> okay mm -hmm. um so um talking about human centric design well um it's important to keep improving and refining the design based on user feedback and testing of course also have empathy and patience with um, the user's needs uh, it's also good if possible to engage um, users throughout the design processes um, for a faster feedback so the user like the user is the most important part of the product since it's the one who's gonna use it 
So you have to give it a lot of respect. So the focus must be on giving them a good experience so they can feel comfortable and satisfied with everything you deliver. You can't really build a platform that is overly complex, but beautiful. Um, you really um, have to focus on building um, a simple and practical design instead, you know? So what I'm saying is that keep it simple. Don't like overthink too much about it. Don't put that many exaggerated stuff. Just try to make it simple. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, so this one, um, so uh, one of the things that designers know, like not only designers, but developers, is that there is also always a conflict between the designer and the developer. So how can we like actually um, deal with that? <laughs> so there has been some sort of feud between designers and developers for like a long time. <laughs> and mostly because designers wants to think like out of the box and create the most crazy ideas possible. And the dev team must deal with it. So um, UI UX designers and developers work together all the time. And the com communication must be clear and concise. Both teams must find a balance and come to agreements that make sense to the business and the users. So actually, they should be seen as one team with everyone working together as a unity. So there is no feud, there is no fight, there is n you, it doesn't have to happen. You know, so let's just try to work together, devs and designers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, one of the things is that I wanted to comment is that like, uh, there are many design heroes over there. So my favorite one definitely is Misko, who is um, my favorite UI UX designer. Um, I'm always checking his YouTube channel for Figma news and special, th special things like tricks. And like he is always very good at teaching and stuff like that. He has like a course, he's very good for learning, especially design systems. So he's pretty good. Um, that's my my design hero <laughs> that I can see. So, um, so uh, the last thing is that, um, is there like any specific design system that I could suggest for the tech corporate industry? Well, as I said before, design systems are unique for each company. Design accordingly to fit the product's um, expectations. There are techniques and plugins to help building them, but it won't serve as a template for others to use since it relies on the product's uniqueness. So brand and like goals as well. So it's important um, to understand that there is a formula to build stuff, of course, but you can't be that plain. You have to, you know, think outside the box and start creating stuff that, you know, goes differently from the formula because as any profession like have um, its formula to build a determined work and for design isn't different so um, try to think out of the box always try to make things fun for sure <laughs> even though you have like this tech company that is very serious you can put like a little bit of game experience maybe and you can make it really nice for the user to use and come back using so that's basically it uh, um my presentation is over <laughs> wow that's that's awesome that was very very helpful so i have like one question you you've 
it, during the talk you keep on mentioning about the game design and all of that so where, which resources should a user can go and follow and any books rec uh, that you recommend for the best game designs well um the ui and ux for game designs aren't that different from app signs and you know website signs but it's related to a game so it's um it's something that moves a lot and mm -hmm. something that has to be simple because for example you can't have a game with lots and lots of texts imagine that no one want to play a game and just read all the time of course there are games that you just read like Skyrim don't know if you know but you have those books and you just can read all of them or not so it's basically um, creating um, things and experience that makes the player slash user entertained so they're like I didn't really study that like in mm -hmm. any course or anything actually i didn't really study ui ux design i was just learning through practice working a lot and the same goes to um ui ux design for games i had to just learn that all by myself and the best thing i can tell you is that you must play lots and lots of games the more like the better so just do it play and pay attention to the ui play attention pay attention to the effects pay attention to the art and how um the experience is like from the menu to the credit part everything is important as it is important when you are using an app and investigating it like uh, i want to build um a relationship app so even though I'm married or I have a fiance or whatever, I have to go and use relationship apps. And mm -hmm. you just tell your wife or husband that, okay, this is just for research. <laughs> and then you use it, understand? So it's basically that. So um, it's, a, it's not, there's no formula. It's what I'm saying. It's just playing a lot and using a lot. I know that many designers spend money a lot on courses and, you know, all that and try to be all academical. But the truth, the truth is you have to be a user and then you get the references and then you can start by there. So don't worry too much about studies and stuff. Be a user, be a player, play games, take references and like, I don't know about you, but I play games since I was like eight years old. So it's important that to helps. keep. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, I think uh, so, I mean I truly appreciate the fact that you've really I mean, given value to the end user. You presented really well. I learned a lot. I think the user and audience will uh, love a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. This was really, 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 really nice. Bye. Bye. Have a uh -huh. nice day. Take care. Bye. Cool. Bye bye.